I have heard many different opinions in my lifetime of who people think God is. Some say he is mean and strict, while others say he is loving and gentle. Some think he is only here to be a genie in a bottle and to give them everything they could ever want while on this earth. Today we are going to look into the Bible scriptures to see who is God really. So go grab your Bibles and we will get started. Welcome, Digging Deep family. I hope you are all having a great day. For all the first time viewers, my name is Casey, and here at Digging Deep, we are all lovers of God's Word. Many times in our world today, we can feel like maybe we are the only ones who are truly seeking God, but here we are creating a community to encourage one another and grow in God's Holy Word. If you would like, feel free to leave me a comment below and let me know if you enjoy this teaching. And if you wouldn't mind, please give this video a little thumbs up. And if at the end of the video, if you feel led, please subscribe so you won't miss any videos as I upload them. Today we are going to look into the scriptures to see who God really is. The Bible tells us that we are created in his own image in Genesis chapter 1 verse 27 at the creation of man. So let's go and read it together. So God created man in his own image and in the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. If we are created in his image, then we must be similar but we are no God by any stretch of the imagination. We are like him in that he made us a trinity just as he is a trinity. We are made up of body, soul, and spirit. God is made up of God the Father, the Holy Spirit, and Jesus the Son of God. He is the creator and we bring forth life. He looks out for his children just as we do. He is our provider and we provide for our children. He is our protector and we protect our children. He is storing up an inheritance for his children as parents should be doing for their children. He disciplines his children and corrects them just as we do or should do to teach our children right from wrong. So these are just a few examples, but you can see why we are like him and why Jesus describes God as the Father, which was a very new approach or concept of God for the Jews at that time. You see, the Jews were terrified of God. Look at Moses. They wouldn't even go up on the mountain to hear from God. He wanted to speak to all of them, not just to Moses. But they thought God would kill them. Maybe they thought that for a good reason. Look at their behavior while Moses was upon the mountain hearing from God. They were down there creating a golden image to worship. It's true. Let's read it in Exodus chapter 20 verses 18 through 23. And all the people saw the thunderings and the lightnings and the noise of the trumpet and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they removed and stood afar off. And they said unto Moses, Speak thou with us, and we will hear. But let not God speak with us, lest we die. And Moses said unto the people, Fear not, for God has come to prove you, and that his fear may be before your faces, that ye sin not. And the people stood afar off, and Moses drew near unto the thick darkness where God was. And the Lord said unto Moses, Thus thou shalt say unto the children of Israel, Ye have seen that I have talked with you from heaven. Ye shall not make with me gods of silver, neither shall ye make unto you gods of gold. We see that they feared God and wanted Moses to go talk to God for them. 
But then look at what they do while Moses is talking with God in chapter 32, verses 1 through 24. And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, Up make us gods which shall go before us, for as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we wot not what is become of him. And Aaron said unto them, Break off the gold earrings which are in the ears of your wives, of your sons, and your daughters, and bring them unto me. And all the people break off the golden earrings which were in their ears, and brought them unto Aaron. And he received them at their hand, and fashioned it with a graving tool, after he had made it a molten calf. And they said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made proclamation and said, Tomorrow is a feast to the Lord. And they rose up early on the morrow and offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat and to drink and rose up to play. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go get thee down, for thy people which thou broughtest out of the land of Egypt have corrupted themselves. They have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. They have made them a molten calf, and have worshipped it, and have sanctified thereunto, and said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which have brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And the Lord said unto Moses, I have seen this people, and behold, it is a stiff-necked people. Now therefore, let me alone that my wrath may wax hot against them, and that I may consume them, and I will make of thee a great nation. And Moses besought the Lord his God and said, Lord, why doth thy wrath wax hot against thy people, which thou hast brought forth out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? Wherefore should the Egyptians speak and say, For mischief did he bring them out to slay them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from thy fierce wrath and repent of this evil against thy people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, thy servants, to whom thou swearest by thy own self and saidest unto them, I will multiply your seed as the stars of heaven, and all this land that I have spoken of I will give unto your seed, and they shall inherit it forever." And the Lord repented of the evil which he thought to do unto his people. And Moses turned and went down from the mount, and the two tables of the testimony were in his hand. The tables were written on both their sides. On the one side and on the other were they written. And the tables were the work of God, and the writing was the writing of God graven upon the tables. And when Joshua heard the noise of the people as they shouted, he said unto Moses, There is a noise of war in the camp. And he said, It is not the voice of them that shout for mastery, neither is it the voice of them that cry for being overcome. But the noise of them that sing do I hear. And it came to pass, as soon as he came nigh unto the camp, that he saw the calf and the dancing, and Moses' anger waxed hot, and he cast the tables out of his hands, and brake them beneath the mount. And he took the calf which they had made, and burnt it in the fire, and ground it to powder, and strawed it upon the water, and made the children of Israel drink of it. And Moses said unto Aaron, What did this people unto thee? that thou hast brought so great a sin upon them. And Aaron said, Let not the anger of my Lord wax hot. Thou knowest the people, that they are set on mischief. For they say unto me, Make us gods, 
which shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, was woke not what is become of him. And I said unto them, Whosoever hath any gold, let them break it off. So they gave it to me. Then I cast it into the fire, and there came out this calf. Many times we see God had to punish his children of Israel because of their behavior. He gave them the law to help them live right, but they misused the law and continued to break the law. We can see from the Old Testament stories that God is long-suffering and he desires to be with his people. God is not some high-minded king upon a throne inflicting pain upon the people. We must be careful to never do what the children of Israel did. And they created their own God in their minds. If we start telling ourselves God is all love or all wrath, we will mislead ourselves and fall into a trap set by the devil. Just as we may be a friend to some, a father or a mother, or a teacher, or a leader, or a pastor, God can take on many different roles as well in his character. As Christians, we must remember that yes, Jesus, who is God in the flesh, is our friend. The Holy Spirit is our teacher and God who is our father. But one day Jesus will be our judge and God will decide if we get an inheritance or punishment. We cannot tell ourselves God is all love, which he is. But he is also storing up wrath for the last days for those who do not repent and accept his son as their savior. We should be well-behaved, disciplined children, waiting to live a life that is pleasing to the Father. Think of your own children, if you have any. If you don't, think of someone else's children. If your children are doing what you have taught them to do, and they are being respectful and grateful and loving and helping others, they grow up and be good parents and live a life that puts a smile on your face. While some children are disrespectful and don't care about themselves or others and live a life of self-destruction, that doesn't put a smile on any parent's face. We have to remember that we are God's children and the way that we live our lives, it matters to God. We should never tell ourselves that God is love and he understands my sin so I can just continue living this way until he takes me home. Knowing that God is real Believing that Jesus is the Son of God or going to church is not enough. We must wake ourselves from this blindness. We cannot earn our way to heaven, but we cannot sleep in blindness to get to heaven either. Jesus warns us of this very thing in Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Paul also warns us of this in Romans chapter 6 verse 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? And in Galatians chapter 3 verse 1. O oh, foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you that ye should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently sent forth crucified among you? We need to realize God does want to be our friend, our father, and dwell inside of us through his Holy Spirit. But we can't lead a life that grieves his Holy Spirit that lives inside of our bodies. We must learn. God gave his only begotten son so that we could have a relationship with him. 
that we would love him with all of our hearts. You see, the question isn't, does God love us? It is, do we love him? This is the real question each one of us needs to ask ourselves. I am not judging anyone, trust me. I am far from perfect. You can ask God, my husband, or my children, and they will tell you. But God saved me, sending his son Jesus to die for my sins. I believe that I have a debt to him that I can never repay. He delivered me not just from drug addiction, but he delivered me from myself. Many of us have been saved by God from ourselves because our cursed flesh will destroy each and every one of us if we let it. Since I know that I owe God everything, he deserves my time, my attention, my affection, my adoration, and my whole heart. By loving God more than my husband, my children, or myself allows me to live as a living sacrifice as stated in Romans 12, 1, which instructs us to live this way. Let's read Romans 12, 1 together. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. In return, God helps me to be a better wife to my husband, a better mom to my children, and to learn to love myself because God does want us to love ourselves. We need to know that it is okay to forgive ourselves and live a life worthy to be called a child of God. I want to encourage you to read your Bible. You will see God's character. We live in a cursed world where human beings have free will and the devil is the prince of the air. And that is why bad things happen to people who we call good. It isn't God, sometimes it's evil people. We can see from the Old Testament that God will and does punish these evil people for their evil acts while on this earth. And more punishment will come for them after this life. So I want to encourage you today to grow as close to God as you possibly can. And learn to love him above anything or anyone. And I promise you, it will change your life forever.